and welcome to the Media Outlet, the show where you can plug into all the latest entertainment news. My name is Alex Sanchez, and I'm your host. This is our Valentine's Day special. This week, we are going to give you our opinions on Valentine's Day movies, music, and TV that will help you and your partner get in the mood for a great day. Let's get this show started. First off, in movie news, Valentine's Day is all about showing the person you're with how much you love them, and what better way to do so than by standing and watching some romantic movies. I want to give you three romantic movies that are on Netflix right now. At number one, we have How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. This movie is great if you want to show your special someone how much of a beautiful man Matthew McConaughey is. At number two, we have 10 Things I Hate About You. This movie is a great tale of two people who have never gone together if it wasn't for Destiny, and who wouldn't want to fall in love that way? At number three, we have The Princess Bride. This movie is a classic that the whole family will love, especially your grandmother. Unless your grandmother doesn't watch movies, then this is awkward. Now we're gonna take it to my review of Fifty Shades of Grey, me. This is just an interview for the newspaper. I just have a couple of questions. Mr. Gray will see you now. Hey everyone, it's Alex here, and I will be reviewing the movie that every girl loves and every guy is unsure what genre oh, it is, Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. Fifty Shades of Grey follows the emotional and physical struggle of Anastasia Steele, played by Dakota Johnson, wow. who gets intertwined, Hello. no pun intended, in the life of super rich boy Christian Grey, played by Jamie Dornan. This is a family show for the most part, so I'm going to have to keep it PG as much as possible. What about you? Oh boy. I'd like to know more about you. There's really not much to know about me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I am. So here are three reasons why I didn't like it. Number one. The movie is somewhat confusing. So basically, their relationship is what confuses me the most. Obviously, they like each other, but at the same time, he doesn't want anyone knowing that they're in a relationship. Also, she's really cool about the whole BDSM thing, even though she reveals that she's a virgin. What? I had a rough start in life. You should steer clear of me. Number two, the acting is not that great. The acting is so dull. There's no motion and the line delivery is something else. I've seen UPS deliver better lines than this movie has. Also, they were just really awkward. I saw no chemistry between the two actors. Number three, their biggest scene was not climactic at all. On the biggest scene, which was also very confusing, Anastasia asked Christian to show her what would happen if he was to punish her. So Christian being like, okay, cool, I'm gonna do it, hits her repeatedly with a belt and whatnot to the point where Anastasia leaves in disgust. But why? You seriously asked him to do that. I'm not even sure what you were expecting. Overall, the movie was just poorly made. Although, yes, there is a positive here. The visuals were actually pretty good. This was one of the few things that I liked. But other than that, the movie just lacked. It had no emotion and it was just not executed correctly. I think I'm going to give this movie, no. I know I'm going to give this movie 2 out of 10 stars. Well, that's my review of Fifty Shades of Grey. One can hope the second one is better. I'm Alex Sanchez, and back to you guys to the studio. Wow, that is a beautiful man. Now it's time for us to take a break. We will be right back with the media outlet. Welcome back to the media outlet. Let's talk about music news. The only way you can really set the mood for swooning the ladies, or dudes, it's 2017, we don't judge, is through music. The best love song out there right now is definitely Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. Let's take a listen.
Now we're going to watch Andy Johnson's fun fact pack about five love songs. Andy? There. All done. All right, Brian. Get ready to feel. What's going on, everybody? Andy Johnson here for the Media Outlet. In honor of Valentine's Day, I have had the Herculean task of choosing five songs to set the mood. Leading off is everyone's favorite boy band from the 21st century. Here is One Direction's 2011 hit, What Makes You Beautiful. One Direction, everybody. Now we go from Britain's Golden Boys to America's Golden Girl, Taylor Swift. Now I know what you're thinking. Her songs are about breakups, not her country roots. In 2008, she released the song, Love Story. Take it away, Taylor. Taylor Swift has an awesome singing voice, and it doesn't hurt that she's not hard in the eyes. Next up is everyone's favorite convict, and you can take my producer for this one on the list. Here is Akon's 2006 hit, Smack That. Thanks, Sydney. Say what you will about Akon, but he knows what he wants. Moving right along, here is former Disney Channel star Selena Gomez with her 2011 hit, Love You Like a Love Song. And I want you to know, baby, I, I love you like a love song, baby. I, I love you like a love song, baby. I, I love you like a love song, baby. And I keep it moving. Selena, you shouldn't have left Disney Channel, but what are you going to do? Our final song I have selected is a little bit of a throwback back to 1999 with one of the original boy bands. This has been Andy Johnson from the Media Outlet. I'd like to leave you guys with Backstreet Boys, I Want It That Way. way. Andy, don't forget to send me that. I have a date in like 10 minutes, so okay, cool. Now it's time for another break. Make sure to stay plugged in to the media outlet. Welcome back to the media outlet for our Valentine's Day special. Our final segment is TV news. I'm gonna give you my top three romantic shows on Netflix. And number one, I have One Tree Hill. This super dramatic show will definitely keep you and your partner entertained. If you're trying to get a smoochin, I would suggest watching something else because this show is very entertaining. And number two, we have Grey's Anatomy, which apparently by watching the first three seasons, you will become a certified doctor. That's not true, but this show will give you the perfect balance of romance and sick patients that you will need. At number three, we have obviously How I Met Your Mother. This is a perfect show if you're trying to get a good life with your partner and will definitely become one of your all-time favorites. Now we're gonna take it to Austin Hall for his review of the top three moments between Ross and Rachel on Friends. They were the couple that revolutionized TV romance. Major crush on you. I knew. You did? Oh, okay. <laughs> I always figured you just thought it was Monica's geeky older brother. I did. Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Austin Hall, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top three moments from Ross and Rachel's relationship on Friends, starting with a night in Vegas. Okay, I need, I need a drink. Well, hey, you know, they, they really overcharge you for that stuff. But who cares because it's all on me.
In this season 5 finale, Ross and Rachel are in Vegas and decide that they wanted to stay inside instead of going out into the nightlife. That is the Vegas Strip. Well, we'll play some blackjack. Here we go. 13. Hit me. Ooh, 23. Which is what we play to at this casino. <laughs> but once they finally decide to leave their hotel room, they're a little too, let's just say, impaired. And it brings one of the most shocking and unexpected moments in TV history. <laughs> With that season 5 cliffhanger, fans will have to turn to season 6 premiere to see what happens. This next moment doesn't bring out the best of Ross and Rachel, but it describes their true love, the fight at Central Park. Me. There was never a good time. Right, because you only had a year and we only hung out every night. Not, not, not every night. With one of the ugliest fights between them before they started dating, Ross knew he had to come back and show his love for Rachel, which leads to one of the most romantic and loving scenes in Friends history. And it all led to one of the most heartbreaking and most thrilling moments in their relationship. Rachel! I got off the plane. Whoa, whoa, excuse me, sir. Do you have a boarding pass? No, no, I, ju I just have to talk to someone. I'm sorry, you cannot go any further without a boarding pass. No, 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 but I, you know... <laughs> With one last chance to bring her back before she heads to Rome, Ross makes a desperate plea for Rachel to stay with him. Taking from you, Ross. I can't do this right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rachel? With all he has to remember her by is a voicemail, Rachel has second thoughts about getting on the plane. What am I doing? I love you. <laughs> I've got to see you. Fans wondering if Rachel even got off the plane and just a voicemail will see what happens. Ross gets an unexpected surprise. I got off the plane. <laughs> 10 years with relationships and I'm on a break. Everyone knew nothing could separate these two. I'm Austin Holland, I'll back to the studio. Thank you, Austin. Jennifer Aniston will always have a place in my heart. And she's hot. That's all for today's show. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Alex Sanchez. Be sure to check out our Facebook page to keep up with all our episodes. Also check out KNWT on Facebook and Instagram to follow all the Channel 8 shows. I hope you all have a great Valentine's Day and can use our suggestions to set the mood. See you next week here on the Media Outlet where you can plug into all the latest entertainment news.